I am going to do um, two things today. I'm going to introduce an idea, which we will meet in a little more depth on Thursday, and then um, look at a sort of off on the side idea. Okay. So I want you to just look with me for a second. Just keep your eyes there for a minute. Look back at this um, quadratic formula here. Okay. This quadratic formula, it took us a lot of work to get it. But it's worth it, not just because it makes this process so easy, like you hardly had to think compared to this, you just sort of do numbers and arithmetic, right? But you also get all these insights out of it. So here's the first insight I want to show you. And maybe if you wrote down the formula, like I did, maybe just on the side here, I want us to rewrite this formula in a very, very, very slightly different way, like hardly any difference at all. We're going to write it like this. It's one fraction at the moment, but I want us to write it as two fractions, like so. Now, if this is um, the same book that you were using last term, okay, you will actually have the lesson where we derived this result. We came up with, we started from ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and then this is where we ended. And there was lots of algebra to get there. Okay? Now, this is actually one of the lines we had. It might have been the second last line, in fact. Okay? So why am I going backwards? Why am I trying to go back to this? What I want to point out to you is that every parabola, and you don't need to draw this, but um, I want to put illustration. Every parabola... No, it's not bad, still got it. Every parabola is symmetrical, okay? Every single one. Uh, this one is really super symmetrical. It's, it's, you know, just reflected across the y-axis here. And so if you have a look at this and this, right? These are what we call the roots uh, or the solutions of when it's equal to zero, okay? Where it intersects with the x-axis. Now, can you see, if you have a look at the shape, right? If you go from the middle, because this thing's symmetrical, this distance here to go to one of the roots is the same as this distance here. Do you agree with that? Like it's symmetrical, just like, just like hopefully, you know, most of our faces are symmetrical. So if you go from the center line, your eye this way is like two centimeters, and your eye that way is two centimeters, at least you hope, otherwise you look funny, right? So this symmetry here means these distances are the same. Okay? Now, I can appeal to a picture to see that, but I can also appeal to this line that you've just written down up here. Okay? Have a look at it carefully. What does this mean? You've got some number here, like once you've put in, in this case, it'd be minus 3 over 4, so negative 3 quarters. And then you do plus and minus, right? Just like you do plus and minus as you do for everyone, right? What do plus and minus mean on this picture, right? Plus means go forwards, right? Like if you started from 0, if that was the middle, plus would be go to the right a little bit. And then you minus, which means go to the left, okay? Plus means go right, minus means go left, okay? And how far do you go? What's that distance? What's that two centimeters like that I was talking about with my eyes? Um, it's whatever this is equal to, which will be some weird number. In this case, it's the square root of 41 over four. That's a bit weird, but what I care about is that it's the same, right? I go to the right that much, and I go to the left that much, okay? So now, therefore, you can write this underneath um, where you've, you've written this, okay? This little um, idea here, which is that this formula, which is algebra, tells me something about this geometrically, like this picture, right? It tells me about two things. First, it tells me where, you remember I said it's symmetrical, right? So it tells me where that middle is, where the axis of symmetry is. So, okay, so axis of symmetry. On my example here, it was like really right down there on the middle. But I could move this to the left, I could move it to the right, and it still have an axis of symmetry somewhere. Where is it? It's this part here. It's that value that you start from. To get one root, you go to the left. To get the other one, you go to the right. So the axis of symmetry is here. Just that bit on the front, minus b on 2a. Okay. So for instance, in this one that I just gave you here, if I had asked you to please graph and we won't do it for the sake of time. But if I took this same equation and said, okay, 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. You see that's the same question, right? I've just sort of labeled it a little bit differently, right? If I asked you to draw that thing, where you would find the middle of that graph, the middle of that graph, is when x is equal to minus b on 2a, which we've already found is minus 3 quarters. Okay, so this graph is sort of moved over to the left a bit of it because minus three quarters is over that way. Okay, there's the axis of symmetry, 
But the other thing you can find with the axis of symmetry is this point down here. This is a really important point to the graph. Uh, it starts with the V. Does anyone know what it's called? The vertex. The vertex. Very good. Um, you can think of it either as like the bottom of the graph, or if the graph's upside down, if the problem is upside down, it'd be the, the top, right? So the vertex is going to line up with this, right? It's going to be in line with that axis of symmetry. So the vertex is located at, in line with, the axis of symmetry. So for instance, let's actually do it with this question that we've just done, question four. Um, if I want to know where the axis of symmetry is, horizontally, I'm going to be at x equals minus three quarters, right? I will just have enough space over here. x equals minus three quarters. That tells me where it is left and right, but it doesn't tell me where it is up or down, okay? I need a y value. How am I going to get a y value that corresponds to this? I'm going to come over to this equation. Right? And I'm going to take x equals 3 quarters and put it in in all of these spots over here. Okay, let's actually just do it together now. I'm going to put y equals 2 times this squared plus 3 times this minus 4. Okay? And I'm just going to crunch that number out and that will tell me where I am up or down. Uh, 3 quarters squared, that's 9 over 16. 9 over 16. So when I multiply by 2, I think I'm getting 9 over 8. I'm just doing this all in my head. So if someone's got a calculator, you can tell me if I'm doing it right. Uh, 3 lots of negative 3 quarters will be minus 9 over 4, and then minus 4. You OK with that? I think I want to get everything in terms of 8s, because that's the, that's the hardest fraction I've got here. So that's going to be 9 over 8. What's 9 fourths in, in terms of 8s? It'll be twice as many, right? So I think I'm going to get 18 eighths. How many eighths are there in minus 4? Hmm, that's a bit harder. I think it's 32. 32 eighths. Okay, because 32 divided by 8 is 4. Okay. Um, 9 minus 18 minus 32. That's 9 minus 50. 9 minus 50. So it looks like minus 41 over 50. So what is this? What is this? It's y equals this, right? So I've got an x, I've got a y. This is a pair of coordinates, OK? So now I can put these together. Minus 3 quarters, minus 41 over 50. And that is where that vertex is, that bottom point there, OK? So I could graph this now if I wanted to, but that's something we'll focus a bit more on Thursday, OK?